Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosso here. I wanted to record a video today uh, just sharing a couple of ideas, best practices for recording Zoom meetings that you're going to be later editing in something like a video editor and putting up onto the internet. Now, I've done a previous video on this YouTube channel. I will put a link in the description uh, showing how to do this process in OBS. So if you wanted to live stream a Zoom meeting, Using OBS, it's very possible. It's a little bit tricky. There's a couple of steps involved in getting the guest audio, your audio, guest camera, your camera, laying those things all out into a canvas and then streaming them onto the internet. Challenging, but possible. But if you are going to not be live streaming, you're going to be just taking a, a video interview with something like an expert, which is what I'm doing in about uh, one hour with a gastroenterologist who's going to be the first uh, video interview featured on this channel, then you have the luxury of not having to figure everything out in real time. Now, one or two words about that stuff you can do. So generally speaking, you're going to get the best performance if you record video locally. So if I record my video as opposed to me recording, let's say, the video feed from my webcam and microphone that's going up to the cloud via Zoom, then downloading that file and editing locally, that kind of workflow doesn't really make much sense. Anytime you're recording in a third-party program like Zoom, you're going to run the risk that it's going to have some kind of built-in compression. Zoom is basically a meeting platform. It's important to remember that. So it's generally trying to compress your webcam feed, make it as lightweight as possible so that the latency is going to be minimized with who you're in the meeting in. Now that's well and good, but there is a bit of a problem here. And the problem is typically that webcams are only able to be used with one program at a time, at least in Ubuntu Linux, which is what I use for my computing. That's the case. Now a solution you can do is just rig up a couple of webcams. So I'm currently recording into my Logitech webcam. What I could do is position another webcam off here and that webcam would be, let's say, recording me into OBS with the same microphone and the microphone uh, could be used also with Zoom as the second webcam. I could even wear two different uh, lavalier microphones and have a different microphone going into each program. Now, the advantage of doing that would be that I'd have a very, very reliable, high quality feed and I could actually use something like a camcorder to record me and for the purpose of keeping the uh, the video streaming more lightweight, I could use a webcam for the actual meeting. So that's the first best practice. Now what I want to demonstrate is a couple of uh, settings that you can use in Zoom and then I'm going to do a little test meeting. I'm, I have my Android phone here and I'm going to just invite myself to a meeting uh, with myself and then end that recording and then I'll show you uh, what kind of an output we get from that process. So let's take a look now at the recording settings in Zoom. Okay, so I've just gone into my Zoom dashboard here and where you can find these settings is clicking on settings and then you will have here recording. Now, uh, if you click recordings there under personal, you're going to be brought to your uh, recording management plot um, area. Now, there are two things, two types of recordings you can do in Zoom. If you have a premium license account, you can avail yourself of cloud recordings. And this is what I'm going to be demonstrating in this video. If you only have the basic free account, uh, you can still do local recordings and you could get your guest to do a local recording and send over the file. But realistically, um, guests are not going to want to go with the trouble. So if you're looking to use Zoom to do uh, expert recordings for a YouTube channel, I really, really recommend just paying for the premium Zoom. If, you can just do it for a month if you're very budget constricted, but uh, it's really worth it to be able to record stuff straight into the cloud on the guest side. And then, as I said, you could combine it with your own recording. So um, you wanna click on settings, don't click on recordings, a little bit confusing. And of course, all these features are only as they exist at the time I'm recording this. Next, click into uh, recordings up the top here. Now, there are a couple of settings here, a little bit buried that I want to uh, draw your attention to. So um, under, cloud recording, this is where we have the cloud recording settings here. Um, and you can see the default setting is not this. This is something I've actually enabled, record, active speaker, gallery view, and shared screen separately. And that's what you want to turn on. So if you go into your settings, it's going to look like this. I just ticked that on. The default position is we're going to record the active speaker with the shared screen. And the way that works in Zoom is it, it's fine. It detects who's speaking and then it puts that webcam feed 
blows up the screen. Now, um, that's probably gonna work just fine if you're looking to do something simple, but you're go it's going to be more powerful um, if you uh, do this, if you use this option. What you're going to get instead of just the one video feed of you speaking, you're going to get your video feed, you're gonna get the gallery, you're gonna get the active speaker feed, and you're gonna get the gallery feed, which is gonna be the two participants or however many participants you have all layered together. And uh, shared screen is not that useful, but if, if one participant's doing a screen share and uh, you want to just cut that in the video. So if you record it channel by channel, uh, you're gonna have much more flexibility and power when you're editing uh, the interview in post-production. Uh, record an audio only file. Uh, that's an option I actually, just for the purposes of simplifying things, probably would take off uh, because the audio is gonna be in the video feed. Uh, but if you're looking to do something like produce a podcast version of the meeting and you don't want to just have to replicate the process of extracting audio from the recording, then go ahead and leave that taped on. Save chat messages most for this kind of use case, we could leave without. So those are the settings in cloud recording as you want to have them set up. Um, now there's one more setting that uh, optimize recording for a third party video editor. Uh, and what it says here in the tooltip is this option ensures compatibility with video editing software you can use or to modify the recording file. It will increase the size um, and it will take the time that it's going to take Zoom to uh, create that file in the cloud. It's gonna be longer too. Nevertheless, obviously given that that's exactly what we're trying to do, it makes sense to tick on that option. So there are a couple of settings that are not enabled by default because most people recording Zoom meetings are looking for more simple use cases of recording a business uh, meeting and maybe putting that up to an internal uh, file share or intranet or confluence, what have you. So if you're going to be doing this for the purpose of recording a video uh, interview and putting that on YouTube, then you want to add in these advanced settings. Now, uh, the one I don't recommend, but it exists there, is uh, you can have the timestamp added to the recording and that'll embed the date and time of the actual meeting into video recording, but that is an option there if you want to have that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a meeting and make sure Zoom uh, cloud recording is enabled in it. Okay, so just gone ahead now and opened up Zoom and as you can see, it's prompted with a uh, default meeting there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, create a meeting and if you click, uh, make sure that start with videos clicked on. Now this is just gonna be a test meeting, but it's going to uh, enable me just to hold up my phone, record myself, but then I want to show you the different files I'm gonna get. So I'll actually just kind of put my phone facing my desk or, or something. So uh, here is my, uh, my, my uh, visage. And um, what I'm going to do now is make sure that I'm going to invite myself as a participant by going into participants, clicking on invite, and then clicking on a copy invite link. That'll give you the password uh, included in that hyperlink as well. And then I'm going to just send that over to, uh, to myself. Okay, so in order to do this, I'm going to go ahead and click on the record button, and I'm going to go for record to the cloud. Now you can see I can do recording to this computer uh, so what I would recommend in terms of the workflow would be that you'd be doing this, set this up in OBS, then start your Zoom meeting, wait for your participant to join, then go for the cloud recording. So I'm going to go for a recording to the cloud, connecting to the cloud server, and I'm just going to record about 10 or 20 or even 30 seconds of this uh, fictitious meeting just for the purpose of uh, demonstrating. So you can see here, I'm going to actually go ahead and uh, grab up the phone, just kind of do a bit of footage, maybe a bit more useful uh, for, the, for this purpose like this. Um, I've got a notification on my phone saying the host is recording it. I'm going to put my phone back down and I think that's enough for a test meeting. Then I'm going to go now and just take a look at what files that Zoom has generated uh, from this meeting. Okay, so two minutes later and I've gone ahead and received that email notification from Zoom saying that your recording is ready now uh, because we enabled the uh, setting for editing that in a third party video editor. Um, if it's a no, if it's something like a 45 hour, 45 minutes, one hour meeting, it's going to take longer than a few minutes. So just be a bit patient. Uh, but when it is ready, you're going to get a email notification from zoom telling you that your files are ready. Now, once again, I recommend before you do the meeting, setting up a parallel camera and a parallel microphone if required. 
um, and recording your video feed locally so that you're not only relying on what Zoom is capturing in the cloud, that can be your, uh, your backup if you really need to take your own speech from there. Uh, but it would be good to have, always to have that backup option, but uh, just to make sure that you're getting a local recording as well. So that's my recommendation for that. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what these files from uh, Zoom actually look like. Okay, so I'm gonna just go now and download these. And as you can say, it's going to be uh, three different files and each one's gonna be downloaded separately, which is fine with me. And uh, that's fine. I'm just giving permission to Chrome to download multiple files. Now let us take a look at uh, what these files actually contain. Now just one or two more settings that I, I glossed over earlier that I think it actually would be worth just explaining. Uh, two more settings that might be of interest to you in that recording setting screen in Zoom. One of them is uh, you have the ability to automatically start the uh, recording and what that's going to do is when, you know, a self-explanatory really, when you start up your Zoom meeting, every Zoom meeting is gonna start recording. Now, the disadvantage here is that if you do a lot of Zoom recordings, uh, this is going to end up taking a significant amount of space on your computer. But if you do choose to enable it, you're gonna have the option to uh, record either locally um, in automatic recording, automatic cloud recording, sharing, uh, I'm just gonna actually turn that off. This option here, automatic recording, and uh, you can choose whether you want that automatic recording process to start recording uh, into the cloud or on your local uh, computer. So again, if you're just using a Zoom account for, uh, let's say the purpose of recording interviews, uh, that automatic recording feature might be great. If you're using it for your daily Zoom life, uh, then uh, you might just end up blowing through your storage limit with a bunch of meetings you don't want to have recorded and that recording then could even potentially be uh, problematic from a, uh, from a compliance perspective. So just be careful there. Um, now, here's one I actually would uh, recommend disabling. The default setting here for is disable participant's name in the recording. So when you see those Zoom interviews and it says, who the person speaking is, um, then that is why. Now that's a that's again an advanced setting that it by default is enabled. So I personally um, don't think that for most uh, Zoom meetings recorded, you're going to want to see that little bit of text overlaid saying who's speaking. It's probably self-explanatory. Uh, so just two more settings there that I would turn off. And I just want to show uh, what I would do with these in a video editor. Okay, so I've just opened up uh, these clips. Now what I want to show you is how I might actually use these if I was actually editing this interview. So I can just grab both of these clips. Now actually if I do that, you're not gonna get the separate clips. Let's just do it one by one. And it would probably be helpful just for yourself to label which one was active speaker view and which one was. The other one, this one's active speaker view and this is going to be the side-by-side uh, -side participant view. So what I might do for instance is at this point in time, uh, cut into let's say this clip and I'm going to cut here and I'm just going to take away this channel. Now what's going to happen if you watch the timeline preview here is going to be uh, my active speaker view and then we're going to jump to the shared, uh, the joint speaker view with the two cameras there. So um, really the advantage of doing this is that you can control exactly when you're going to flip between the two and if you have that local recording and you've got a local recording on the host side then while well, you've got every option out there. You're going to have your local recording, Zoom recording, Zoom gallery recording, and guest recording, and you can mix and match those exactly as you want in post-production. So I hope this uh, video has been useful about how to, um, how to do video editing um, using post-production workflow for recording a Zoom meeting. And if you'd like to get more videos about OBS, Zoom meetings, and other techno technological subjects, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching.